connectivity, but on top of that, on top of the, uh, the interface, now you have, uh, I mentioned web servers maybe, or mobile APIs, cloud services, et cetera. So these are all software that you have to add. So could be one module you buy that has all this, could be individual chips, several different choices. This um, probably won't come as much of a surprise for those of you who have been looking at, at um, Wi-Fi and adding Wi-Fi already, but the simplest way to go do it is, I'm assuming you have an application processor running your application. You can add a wireless module, a Wi-Fi module, for example, that has an embedded MPU in it, and that MPU will run the stack, will run the, the connectivity stack, or in this case, the Wi-Fi stack. And it's all buttoned up, and there's a layer of security in there. And that security is different. Sometimes that security just gets you to the cloud and back. Sometimes it just gets you to the uh, access point. So there's different levels of security. This is the easiest, but it's also the most expensive. So if you make a thousand pieces of something and it costs you a couple dollars more, uh, who cares? It's a couple thousand dollars. If you make a million of them, okay, now a dollar or two more can make a, a big difference. So another way to go is you can actually embed it. So you can buy the module with the MCU built in, and, and sometimes they actually let you embed your code inside. By the way, so NXP, from a microcontroller point of view, we make microcontrollers. We sell microcontrollers to people who make these modules. We don't actually sell those modules, but uh, all of these are valid options. I'm not, by the way, saying one is better than the other. It all depends on your application and your needs. So here. The Wi-Fi module built in MCU. So this one, you actually take some of the bandwidth and memory of the MCU built into the Wi-Fi module and take advantage of that. That's a, obviously a cheaper solution. Um, maybe a great uh, choice for you, depending on how much you need in terms of the MCU, how much I.O. you need, how much horsepower you need, how easy it is to be integration. So it's a little bit harder because now you have to integrate and work with all the tools. So another way to go is actually buy a radio-only module. You can buy a radio-only module, and then you have your choice of MCUs, but you run the network stack outside. And obviously, the network stack has to be ported to that MCU. The beauty of ARM is if it's a Cortex-M4, it's pretty easy to, to uh, take advantage of uh, things that have been designed for the M4. You have to worry a little bit about the peripherals. An example would be here, um, Broadcom has Wicked. You've heard of Broadcom's Wicked. So Wicked is imported to several different processors, the LPC 1700, 1800, and 4300 from, from NXP. So you could actually take the Broadcom Wicked stack, apply it here, combine it with your application, get a radio on the chip, Murata, for example, and off, and off you go. But the last one is worth mentioning. It's, I've seen it uh, in very high-volume customers. It's called a chip down. We don't have a module at all. Essentially, you don't pay for the overhead of the module. You just take it for all the components down. When that gets a little trickier, we want to be in high volume because now you have to worry about certifying your Wi-Fi. Now you have to worry about antenna design. So now you have to worry about things that you don't have to worry about up here. You let somebody else worry about them. That's you know your job is to go off and get good Wi-Fi. More flexibility, lower cost. Uh, really, the most flexibility because you can pick any MPU, pick any antenna configuration. But it's going to take a lot more work to go get that done. So those are your choices in terms of adding your connectivity module, if you will. For the sake of discussion, we're going to pick this one because you the most flexibility in external module. None of that better or worse depends on your application. But just in terms of illustrating a few points, we'll, we'll look at the third one here. All right, so that was the hardware. So now the software running on the hardware. You know how to write your application here. This first one is if you're going to do the design from the ground up. You can go get that Wicked stack that we mentioned. So if Broadcom is ported Wicked to the MCU you've chosen, you've got that already. But now you've got to add all these things. You still have to figure out the cloud connectivity, how you're going to do over there updates. Um, there is some security in the Wicked stack, but there's more you have to worry about up here. So you can do all this, and people do all that. It takes more time, and there's a little bit more risk, but that is certainly an option. Something else you can do is option, the second option here. You can go to a cloud provider, um, Singworks as an example, or there's a, there's a bunch of them out there. You can actually go and say, all right, I want to use your cloud, and they will give you an agent to run on your MCU. So they'll give you a bit of code that connects just to their cloud. So it's a good way to get up and started. It's a little bit less flexible if you want to add multiple clouds that we talked about. We have to go through their cloud to go do that. But it kind of simplifies your life a little bit. You don't have to worry about some of the things that um, they'll take care of some of the security and some of the connectivity for the cloud. Still have some things to worry about up there, though. So there's a third option. And the third option is to actually choose a company that's done an OS that has everything integrated. Now, Embed, except for the connectivity piece, you still need to say Wicked, but Embed would be an example of that solution, where Embed is actually trying to combine everything together and offer it for free as a, as a tool chain with a crypto box, which is essentially a bunch of cryptographic algorithms. So another option is Zentry, who we have here today, and we'll talk a little bit more about the details. They've actually combined everything into a Zentry OS. So it's really not just an OS, it's an OS plus connectivity stack plus a, a bunch of stuff that's going into more detail. Um, and that runs on um, multiple processors, but uh, NXP processors as well. So some software choices there. Security. I could spend a whole topic talking about security, and NXP, I have to say, takes security pretty seriously. We, we have done a lot of work with passports and banking, very uh, high-level security. Now, you don't always need banking great security for your uh, connected widget. You might argue that the front door might be a good one to have pretty high security on. It depends what, what you're adding. So in our simplest case, here's the three pieces of your connected product. So how do you know, however, that this person who sends a signal to her doorknob to open her cousin's in is actually the right person? How do you know that somebody hasn't kind of gotten in the middle of the signal here or stole the data or cloned the device? and inserted themselves in here. So all of this is what you have to protect. So I'm oversimplifying this, but essentially, you're worrying about the data integrity, the data that you're transmitting back and forth. And there's some things to help, help you with that. So you have to establish trust with the outside world.